Every year in Norway, there is a huge electric car test in the cold in the winter. They do this to try and find out which EVs have the range, well, the closest amount of range to what they're advertised when it's really, 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 really cold and snowing, etc. Now, this obviously matters in places where the temperatures get freezing, they're minus Fahrenheit, Celsius, whatever you use in your country. You want to know how much range your electric car actually has in that situation. This range test involved 19 different electric cars. Now, four of the 19 cars actually were very close to getting their advertised range, which was quite remarkable. Here are the details. Here are the winners, the losers. This is a really quick summary, guys, on which EVs did the best in really cold temperatures. Now, my car that I own was tested, the XPG6. It was one of the tested cars in this list. Very interesting to see how they all went. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. 19 cars, right? All of them have an advertised range of over 300 miles. Um, actually, in total, there's 24 different cars, 24 new EVs in this test. 19 of them had an average, like I said, of more than 300 miles of range. But the, res well, the results were quite interesting. Now, keep in mind, these results are a little bit a little confusing to me because there has been other tests done in other countries, for example, Denmark and Sweden, in really cold temperatures as well, where different results have been found. So these results are not going to guarantee you're going to get this kind of range. And they are a little bit confusing because there are some cars in this test, which I know for a fact, are built on the same production line using the same batteries, and they had a very different numbers, very different variances. I'll explain to you what I'm talking about. Twice a year in summer and winter, the NAF, Norwegian Automobile Association, and the country's motor website get together to put EVs, well, into test in the real world. In Norway, about 95% of all cars sold in 2024 were fully electric. So you can see why it's very really relevant to their market. Running each car's battery down almost to zero, um, actually, but to between 10 to 15%, they actually tested the cars. And this is why these numbers might not be quite accurate. Now, the media, many sites are reporting that Tesla's car did quite badly. And the XPG6 didn't do as well as I would have expected it to. But remember, some of these cars, when the battery gets to, when it says zero on your car, you'll be at zero. There's nothing left, right? That's the case with some of these cars. Some of them, it's not. For example, with the G6, and with Teslas, they usually have around 30 to 40, even up to 50 kilometers of range left in the battery after you hit zero. So you can still keep driving after zero. And on average, that's pretty normal for those brands. So that's why this test may be a little misleading because some of these cars could have had a lot more range left than what you think they would based on the numbers I'm about to share with you. Anyhow, what was the temperature in the test? Well, the temperature ranged from minus three to seven degrees. So I don't know for sure if all these cars were tested at minus three. Uh, were some of them tested, were they all driven at the same time? Now, I think they were driven at the same time, but I'm not 100% certain. So looking at the numbers here, you can see the Polestar 3 did do the best because its WLTP range is 348 miles and its range in this test was 330 miles. So it nearly achieved its WLTP range. That said, it has a huge battery and it's not particularly an efficient car. If you think about it, it's got a 107 kilowatt hour battery and it got 330 miles in terms of total distance covered. So, you know, good and bad. The good is you're going to get close to the range you think you're going to get. The bad is the efficiency of this car could be a little bit better, I think. Now, looking at in terms of percentage, a percentage difference in terms of claimed range versus actual achieved range in the real world. The Polestar 3 was the best, like I said. In second was, surprisingly, the BYD Tang. You can't buy the BYD Tang in many countries. China, yes, of course. I believe you can also, like I said, there is for, they are on sale in Norway. I think they might be on sale in Sweden and a couple of countries in Europe as well, but they're not on sale in any right-hand drive markets. The BYD Tang is a seven-seat electric SUV. Now, the Tang has a, a pretty big battery as well, but it's a bit bigger of a car than the Polestar 3. It has 108.8 kilowatt hour lithium-ion phosphate blade battery, and its 
claimed range is 329 miles. And on the test, it got 300 miles, which was about 29 miles less than what the car claims. Now, the Mini Countryman did really well too. That said, as I mentioned before, it's also very inefficient to begin with. It has a 64.6 kilowatt hour battery. It's not a very big car and it's only claimed to get 248 miles of range, but it did get pretty close to that range in the test. It got 221 miles, which was only a variance of minus 27 miles. Another car that did really well, which also has a big battery pack and doesn't get much range in terms of its claims, is the Mercedes G-Class. It had a 116 kilowatt hour battery. And remember the Mercedes G-Class, it's not a particularly big electric SUV. It has a claim range of only 275 miles. So very, very short claim range considering that large battery pack. But it did do pretty well. It only had it only got, did 39 miles less than was claimed at 237 miles. The Lotus Amiya, same thing, 98.9 kilowatt hour battery, but it has a much bigger claim range at 311 miles and it achieved 271. Now, going down in terms of this list, if you look at it in the context of minusing the amount of miles you would get from the WLTP range, then you can see the Sea Lion 7 was next with minus 41, the Smart hashtag three or smart number three was next at minus 43 build a clu minus 49 the hongqi ehs7 that's an electric suv from china minus 55 ford explorer ev minus 55 the kia ev3 minus 57 neo el8 minus 57 now if you look down this list a little bit further you'll see one interesting phenomenon the volvo ex30 was minus 63 so considering the Volvo EX30 and the Polestar both use, as far as we know, as far as I know, and I've been to China and seen them, the same battery, I don't know why one of them uh, got such a big difference to the other. The Volvo EX30 was minus 63 miles. And the Polestar, as I mentioned before, was only minus 18 miles. So that's a bit of a, an unusual phenomenon. I'm not sure, how that, not sure how that happened. BMW i5 was next with minus 65. Hyundai Ioniq five was minus 68 that said that was coming off a pretty good base the hyundai onic 5 is claimed to get 339 miles of range from its 80 kilowatt hour battery it got 271 next up was the hunt that was the xpeng g6 the g6 with an 87.5 kilowatt hour battery gets 342 miles of claimed range in this test it got 267 miles which was minus 75 here in Australia, though, guys, I can say from seeing um, some other people testing it, the G6, when you get to zero, it can still keep going for around 30 kilometers. So I'm not sure if that was factored into this test at all. I'm guessing probably not. Now, the worst car in terms of the total number of miles that it was in, it was in deficit in comparison to its WLTP tested claim was the Tesla Model 3. Big surprise here. In previous testing of the Model 3 in Europe in cold temperatures, it's done quite well. It's been in the top three or four cars. So I'm not sure what's happened here. The Tesla Model 3 has a claimed WLTP range of a staggering 436 kilometers, 436 miles from its, well, we think it's around an 80 kilowatt hour size battery, which is a lot. In this test, it did 330 miles, which was a variance of minus 106 miles. Now, looking at it in terms of percentages, it wasn't the worst car in terms of percentages. The worst car in that respect was actually the Peugeot E3008, which had a 32% battery range loss. It went from 510 kilometers of claim range to 347 in this test. 32% less than its claims. The Voyage Dream was down 29%. The Peugeot E5008 was down 26%. And the Tesla Model 3 was fourth last with a minus 24%. What did surprise me though, I have to say, is the Porsche Macan, which is a brand new electric car from Porsche, having a, a number of minus 22%. Now, it's one of the most expensive cars in this test. It's a brand new car. And you would have expected it to maybe, because of those reasons, do a little better. That said... Unfortunately, this test, it's just there's too many variables involved. And because these cars weren't driven to 0%, these are really just estimates coming from these testers. They don't know exactly what would have happened if they had driven all the way to 0%. And they don't know what would have happened if they had driven till the car actually died. These numbers could have been wildly different. Like I said before, 
the Model 3 might have actually achieved significantly different numbers to this if they'd driven it till it died. And that would be more reflective of probably the real world, I think it would be anyway. I mean, in the real world, sometimes if you're going to try to drive your car as long as you possibly can in extreme temperatures, yeah, you, you probably would be in a situation where you wouldn't need to care about this. You'd be charging your car every couple hundred miles, I imagine. But it is interesting to see these numbers, to see that in winter, the average range loss for these cars was probably around about 17% in winter. So we're talking, you know, minus five degrees Celsius. You're probably going to lose 15% on average from your EV's life or your EV's potential or the normal range you would get out of your EV. That said, most EVs won't achieve their, their WLTP range or the EPA range unless they're being driven uh, stop-start, you know, um, not on freeways. So if you drive your EV on a freeway, you probably get around 20% less range. In stop-start traffic, that normal city driving, you'll probably get close to the 100% claim. That's my experience anyway. Guys, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Thanks for watching.